Hi, and welcome to Home Assistant How To with Bearded Tinker. Today we are going to talk about a little known feature that Home Assistant has shopping list embedded into it. We'll start in a couple of seconds. If you have been browsing through my GitHub, maybe you have noticed that a couple of my automations are using something that's called shopping list. And no, that's not add-on. You don't need to install Grossy and have fun time configuring and tracking stuff you want to purchase in Grossy. No, you can do that from within Home Assistant. Home Assistant has a very simple shopping list, but it's efficient if you want to track items and you want to note if something is already purchased or needs to be removed from the list or not. And of course, the best thing is that you can automate it with Home Assistant. So let's go through the process of installation and setting up of shopping list. In order for you to set up, if you haven't already set up your shopping list, is to go to configuration, integrations, add integration, and of course, find shopping list. And that's it. The shopping list has been now configured. And when you configure it on the left side, you will now have additional item called shopping list. This tab is the place where you can see, also add and remove everything to the shopping list. In order to add item, you just type in milk or whatever you want to add. Click on a plus and it will add this item. If you have multiple items, you can also sort them. Click here and then just move the items around. When you're finished with the item, you can tick the box. The good thing about this integration is that it keeps the checked items, meaning the items that you have maybe already purchased, in the separate list. In order to clean this, you would just press this button here. But if you want to re-add the item, you can just untick this box and it goes to the main list. So, for example, I've gone to the shop and bought those two items. They are now on checked items list and I can clear the checked items list. Okay, that's simple. What else can we do with the shopping list inside Home Assistant? Well, some of you maybe don't want to see or use the tab here. You can embed it inside your UI. Let's go to overview and, for example, here, I want to also add the shopping list. Click on three dots, add a dashboard, add card, and you guessed it, right? The card is called shopping list. Here, you can give it a title, and the title will be added to the heading. You can, of course, select the style, and more or less the same things that you can do. Here, in the shopping list, you can now also do inside your Lovelace UI. Once again, add item, tick items, and of course, clean items. But that would be too easy, because there are also some additional things that this integration allows you, and that's automating stuff. For example, in my main setup, I track two things, dishwasher and washing machine pots. I know that each box of the dishwasher pods is packed in 70 pieces. I know also that washing machine is packed in around 50 pieces. So what I did is I created a tracker that tracks how many times did I use or start washing machine, because presumably each time you start washing machine, you use up one pod. Let's go to my main setup. In this sample automation for my dishwasher, in the end cycle, meaning that I track when the machine has ended, I do a couple of things. For the trigger, I use the status of the power consumption. If the power consumption falls below certain threshold, 2 watts, this indicates that dishwasher is done. But there is a condition I also check if previously the start dishwasher automation has put this boolean to on state. If both conditions are met, I run a couple of uh, services. First of all, I send notification that the dishwasher is done. Then I turn the boolean to off, 
because now the dishwasher is turned off. And also I use counter to decrement or decrease the number of the pods. And that way I'm tracking the usage of the dishwasher pods. In the dishwasher pods stock low, which is triggered when the count of dishwasher pods falls below 10, I run two things. First, I add to the shopping list using the shopping list service item. The name of the item is dishwasher pods. And then I also send myself a notification, both to me and my wife, that the dishwasher pods are low. We will now fake everything and trigger this automation, just so you can see what's going on inside Home Assistant. Shopping list is now empty. We'll go to configuration, automations, and let's search for stock. Restock dishwasher pods. I will run the action. If we look at debug information, the first service that was run was shopping list, add item, and we added item called dishwasher pods. Let's go to shopping list. And in the shopping list, now we have dishwasher pods. The same way that you can add items, you can also remove items. It's very hard to track the oil, bread, and some of that stuff, but items that repeat and that can be tracked are definitely toners for the printers, dishwasher and washing machine pods, and stuff like that, that you can track whenever it's used, and then you can create automations that would be triggered when this stock is low. The great thing about this is that this can also be combined with the zones. What this means? If we look at the official documentation for the shopping list integration, you can see that we have services shopping list add item, shopping list complete item, meaning check mark, shopping list incomplete item means remove the check mark, complete all, check mark to all, incomplete all, remove all check marks, and also shopping list dot clear completed items. These are the six services that are embedded inside Home Assistant. But one great example that is in the documentation of Home Assistant is the creation of the notification that would be triggered when you reach certain zone. So what's the use case? Let's go to my recording setup and create something similar. Let's go to automations, create new automation, start with empty, shopping, notification. Trigger will be zone. And since I don't have that many zones here, because this is my recording setup, I will use this zone. I want this event to be on the enter, so whenever something enters this zone, and let me select this person. So it will be triggered whenever Bearded Tinker or device connected with Bearded Tinker arrives into the zone called Bearded Hesio zone. The way it would work for you is to create a new zone that would cover the shop where you usually go for shopping. Each time when you enter that zone, you will get notification. And what notification this will be? In the actions, we will select notify. Message will be, here is shopping list. Title will be shop here. And inside the data, we will add click action. which will be shopping list and URL will be shopping list. And what this automation will do, as we said, when we enter this zone with this user, it should call a service notification, create a message called shop here with the body of the message sheet is shopping list. And also inside under it up, it should provide us with the link that you can click and this link would open this shopping list. Which is also a great way to get reminded of stuff that you have to buy. But remember, unfortunately, at this time, Home Assistant can only create one shopping list it would be great if it would be possible to create multiple shopping lists because I presume that you don't buy toners for the printer on one side and the food on the other side in the same shop.
Maybe you do, but it's also possible that you don't. Of course, shopping list is no match to grossy, but grossy, on the other hand, can be too complex for some simple stuff. So I really do hope that you did find this video useful and that you will be able to embed or use shopping list, the internal home asset integration, in your automations and your setup. If you have some great scenario on how to use or how to automate the shopping list, don't forget to leave comment down in a comment section below, or even better, go to the Discord server, the link to Discord server is in the description of the video. And before we wrap up this video, I really would like to thank everybody who has joined my YouTube channel and become YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support. And also, of course, thanks to everybody who commented, watched, liked, or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below. If you did like this video, please give me a thumbs up, it really means a lot. And I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.